Welcome to Matrix Tech Talk. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about what makes an engineer outstanding. Today, I'm going to share with you the seven attributes that makes an engineer a technical project lead outstanding in the team. In the past five years, I have interviewed hundreds of technical experts, engineers, safety experts, project leaders, security engineers, and I've worked with dozens of technical experts. Obviously, I've made mistakes, monumental mistakes of hiring the wrong person, and at the same time, I've been able to recruit some outstanding people for my company. So I sat down and asked myself this question, what makes the difference? What are the attributes they have, the outstanding players, that makes them outstanding? And today I'm gonna share with you seven of such attributes I came up with. The first attribute that I've seen on the outstanding players is their passion. They're extraordinarily passionate about their work. They're passionate engineers. Whenever I talk to these outstanding players about a technical challenge, their face kind of lights up because they're, they're so excited. They want to go and attack the problem. They want to, want to pursue the challenge. They want to solve the problem. And exactly opposite happens when you talk to someone who's not very passionate about it. They will listen and they oftentimes come up with counter argument before even trying to solve that problem. So in my experience, those who did not have the passion, did not have had the attitude to go and pursue the problem, underperformed. And the passionate ones sailed throughout the project. The second attribute that you should look for is someone's ability to accept their own mistakes. So this one is difficult. There is this notion in engineering called ego-based engineering. We don't tend to see our own mistakes. That's why the testing team has to be decoupled from the development team. So Marshall Goldsmith in his book, What Got You Here, Won't Get You There, talks about one major attribute that everyone needs is accepting that the person is not right. When you say something, we have the tendency, we have the natural tendency to, to prove ourselves right. We keep arguing. That is absolutely unnecessary and contraproductive because end of the day, it does not matter whether I'm right or the other person is right. What matters is if we're making progress with the project or not. This book is unlike many of the self-improvement books. This one is not for converting mediocrity into success. This one focuses on ultra successful people, how they can get even more successful. The, all the clients uh, Marshall Goldsmith works with are C-level executives in Fortune 500 companies. What he says is even these people, they need one or two habits to flip in order to go even further in their career and in their job. So this is an excellent book that I would recommend to read. So the second one, as I said, ability to accept the mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes, so accept it. You don't have to be right all the time. The third attribute I've seen on the outperformers are their ability to articulate a problem, the clarity. There is no such thing as vagueness in engineering. An engineer should have the ability to talk about their technical problem in a way that everybody understands. In general, I categorize people in three different categories in terms of their communication skill. If you cannot make someone understand a problem, probably you haven't understood the problem yourself. They're not able to uh, communicate their problem in a clear manner. So this is a kind that you should not hire. The second kind is they're able to communicate, they talk, however, they overcomplicate things. So they will dive into the technical detail before even explaining the scenario. So it's also difficult to follow them and they're often not able to convey the primary message of the problem. They go to the technical details too quickly. The third kind, this is the kind you should look for, is people who are able to talk about a problem in a top-down manner. 
So they're very good at articulating the problem. They start with the general scenario and slowly dive into the problems. So the ability to articulate a problem clearly so that everybody understands is a very, very important criteria. The fourth attribute I've seen on those outperformers is their ability to take responsibility and self-criticize. These people take responsibility. If something goes wrong, they, t they take the charge and they're able to self-criticize. They're able to say, okay, this is where I went wrong. So this is, this is an ad admirable quality and not too many people display this quality. The problem is when you don't have this quality, when you're not self-criticizing, then someone else will have to point your mistakes and this is what, what makes things complicated. And um, that's why self-criticism and self-reflection and the ability to take responsibility for something that goes well, at the same time something that does not go well, is very, very crucial. The fifth attribute is by far the most important quality. Only this attribute alone is gonna make someone an outperformer. And this attribute is the ability to take criticism. If the person is able to take feedback or criticism or not, defines if this person will be successful or not in your organization. Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg was asked a question that what do you look for in a person when that person should scale with your company? Her answer was the ability to take feedback because only when you can take feedback, you can learn and grow. So this one is particularly important when you hire, you have to see if this person is able to take criticism or not. I kind of categorize feedback into three different levels. The first one is the constructive criticism where you sugarcoat, you positively formulate the feedback. And you'll be amazed how many people out there are not even able to take positive criticism, constructive criticism. The moment you start with the criticism or the feedback, they'll go into the defensive mode and try and explain why they're right. Again, the attribute two I talked about. Uh, if you're not able to accept your mistakes, you will not outperform. Even the mildest form of criticism or feedback, which is the constructive feedback, is hard for many, many of us to take. The second level that I call is the direct feedback or a, a little more harsher form of feedback when you directly tell people what you expect. The former CEO of General Electric, Jack Welch, talks about this kind of criticism or feedback in his book, Winning. What he talks about is candidness. The ability to be candid in an organization is vital for the organizational success. So you are very direct and candid with your feedback. In my opinion, about 90% of the people that I have seen will not be able to take candid and direct feedback. This is really important that you're not only able to take sugar-coated constructive feedback, time to time you should be able to take candid and direct feedback. And the third level of feedback is really, really harsh. It's sometimes mean and hurtful. People should have the ability also to deal with that because in today's world, you will have to face all kinds of criticism in the internet or even in your organization. However, you have to be careful here. If you're being bullied by your boss or by one of your colleagues, that's not criticism anymore. You have to deal with that in a different way. You shouldn't be accepting bullies. If you think your boss or anyone in your organization is bullying you, probably it's time for you to look for a new job. Now that I talked about how important criticisms are, here's the good news. You can actually train yourself to take feedback. There are ways and techniques. You can take constructive feedback and you can give constructive feedback. I would recommend a book by Douglas Stone, Thanks for the Feedback, 
And this book will really, really help you grow your ability to grow feedback. And believe me, this single most quality will make you outstanding in your team. If you're a manager and leading a team, the ability to give, give feedback will also help you nurturing your team. So this particular book talks not only about how to take feedback, but also how to give feedback effectively. I highly recommend this book. The sixth attribute that makes an engineer outstanding is their social skill. So now, I'm not saying a technical geek who does programming all day has to be a super social person who um, goes and hang out with every, every single person they see. That's not what I'm saying. Traditionally, we have categorized people in a binary fashion based on their uh, social skill. We have called them either introverts or we have called them extroverts. It turns out none of us are fully extroverts and none of us are fully introverts. We are all ambiverts. Our level of introvertness or extrovertness depends on the context. So what I'm saying by social skill of this technical people, in their context, in their development environment, in their company, they should be able to socialize or build rapport with their peers in a way that, that makes them glued in the team. So the ability to, to build rapport and work together with their peers and also their managers in an environment that makes it comfortable is absolutely essential for an engineer to excel in their field. The seventh attribute that I've seen on those who excelled in my company is their ability to stay calm. Emotional intelligence is something that you can talk about here. When someone aggravates, it radiates so much negative energy that it not only damages his performance, it also affects the team. When you're aggravated, you're actually in the flight or fight mode and there is no way you can do something constructive when you're in the flight or fight mode. So your ability to be able to stay calm will be crucial in such situations and help you excel in your team. So here is again the list of seven attributes that makes an engineer outstanding. Number one is passion. Someone's passion for his or her work will make that person outstand in their job. The second is the ability to accept his or her mistakes. Third is the ability to articulate a problem in a clear way. Fourth is the ability to take responsibility and self-criticism. Fifth is the ability to take feedback from others. Sixth is the social skill within the team and the context. The seventh is the ability to stay calm in all situations. So I highly recommend when you hire technical experts, you look for this seven attributes. Among the seven attributes that I talked about today, which one do you think is the most important? Please write us in the comment section. We'll love to hear your opinion. And if you have liked this video, please share this video. Please subscribe to, to our channel. That would mean a great deal to us. Thank you for watching our video. This was Hassan Akram with Matrix Tech Talk. In this podcast show, we bring in the industry leaders and experts in the automotive domain to share their experiences along their journey. The mission of our podcast is to start a dialogue that will allow us to understand the development of automotive industry and where the automotive industry is going. You can ask questions to our guests directly. Just send us an email to podcast at matrix.de. We'll schedule a call with you during the recording and you'll be part of our show. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any new episodes. Please share this video to help others get enlightened as well and that would mean a great deal to us. See you in the next episode.